Welcome to Statistics for Survey Session 2 Tables, Optional Segment 2, Inverse Cumulative Relative Frequency. The objective of this segment is to understand how to calculate and interpret inverse cumulative relative frequencies. It can be helpful if you are already familiar with the terms cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency, which was discussed in Session 2, Segment 2. The terms to be covered in this segment are inverse cumulative frequency and inverse cumulative relative frequency. Let's start this segment by having another look at the definition of cumulative frequency, which was that it shows the frequency up to and including the value. Now an inverse is actually the same as a reverse of this. So inverse cumulative frequency shows the frequency from the value and more. Let's have a quick example to see if we can further understand these definitions. For example, 15 students has scored a just pass. So the value just pass has a frequency of 15 and an cumulative frequency of 34. Now the 34 can be interpreted as the number of students who had a just pass, so the value, or actually something that was worse. Now the inverse is the exact opposite and that's therefore the value or better. So if we have a look at the inverse cumulative frequency, you can actually see that 31 students scored a just pass or better. Also in the interpretation, you can every time see here that it's about or worse because it's looking up and in this case looking up means something poorer. Well, for the inverse, it's looking at better every time, because in this case, if you look down and this way, then actually it becomes better. Now let's have a closer look at the calculation for this. We start at the bottom, so we start at the very good. Now, how many students scored very good or better? Since we don't have anything that's better than very good, that's simply these four. For the next one, we can ask ourselves how many students scored pass or better, which is the sum of these two, which is 4 plus 12, or these 4 plus 12, and that becomes 16. The next one scored just pass or better, well, that's the sum of these, which is 4 plus 12 plus 15, but notice that this 4 plus 12 was actually also here. So indeed, we can also use this 16 and simply the value of just pass the frequency of it, 15. So 16 plus 15 equals 31. On our next one, we can see that scored just fail or better is the sum of these students, which is this total. And as you might notice again, uh, all of this is also in here. So you can actually see that that's the same as these two. I'll quickly go over the other ones. Scored poor or better is the sum of these, which is equal to this one plus uh, the 35. And the last one is of course every one. So that's all of them added up together, which is the same as 45 plus five, and is in total of 50. If you can calculate something based on absolute frequencies, you can almost always also do the same, but then based on the relative frequency. So instead of adding up all the absolute frequencies from the bottom, we could actually also add up all the relative frequencies from the bottom to get these inverse cumulative relative frequencies. However, you're then also again adding up any roundings you did from those relative frequencies. So it's actually preferred to instead take the inverse cumulative frequency and divide that by the total. Here's an example of that method. The total of all the frequencies was actually 50. And on the previous slide, we already saw that there were 31 students who scored a just pass or better. And therefore 31 divided by 50 equals 0 0.62. Now this 0 0.62 or 62% of the students therefore passed the exam. As a last note, there is some relation between the regular cumulative frequencies and those inverse cumulative frequencies. 
because it kind of deals with how the values are sorted. In this case, they are sorted from very poor to very good. But if I would flip that around and then actually take also the absolute frequencies and flip those around so they still match, then I can calculate the cumulative frequencies again, for example, here. And if you look very carefully, these are actually the same as the inverse cumulative frequencies from the previous example. If I calculate on the lower table the inverse cumulative frequencies, starting at the bottom, working my way up, then these are now actually the same as the cumulative frequencies from the previous one. So depending on how I actually sort my values, the interpretation of cumulative frequency and inverse cumulative frequency are somewhat in reverse. So be careful how the table is sorted when you have to interpret these.